everyone. For those who don't know me, my name is Kaysa Miranda. I am currently a sixth quarter nursing student and I'm reporting live from my backyard in Fresno, California, good old Central Valley. I hope you guys are finding yourselves well today and have a great day. I'm Matt Gearing. I'm a senior business management major and I live in Sonora, California. Hi, I'm Roxanne Perolino. I'm a senior at PUC majoring in liberal studies and getting my elementary education credentials. I'm currently in Glendale, California. Stay safe, everyone. Hi, I'm Batman. I'm a senior major in everything awesome. And if you don't know where I'm at, that's because I don't want you to know. I'm Leah Dopp. I'm a senior English major and <laughs> I'm in Oceanside, California. Hi, my name's Nick. I'm a uh, actually a PUC alumnus. I was a history major. Uh, and I am in Temecula, California. Hi, I'm Gabriella Lua. I usually go by Gabby, and I'm at home with my dogs in Sacramento. Howdy, my name is Cole Tanner, and I am out in Oakdale enjoying the uh, great outdoors. Hi, my name is Hannah Dekalungan. I am currently in Glendale, California. God sent his son
So for scripture, I wanted to share a verse that I've come into contact lately, and I think fits perfectly with everything that's going on right now. So join me for getting Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2. So then, let's also run the race that is laid out in front of us, since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us. Let's throw off any extra baggage, get rid of the sin that trips us up, and fix our eyes on Jesus, faith's pioneer and perfecter. He endured the cross, ignoring the shame, for the sake of the joy that was laid out in front of him, and sat down at the right side of God's throne. And basically, Paul is saying, let's get rid of all the distractions that's going on in our life right now. That can be fear, worry, stress. And ever since the COVID-19 began, a lot of us have been going through that. Now more than ever before, the world is in so much uncertainty. And it's so important that we fix our eyes on the one thing that is for certain, and that's God and the plan he has for us. Last week, I heard a saying, faith is not a lever, it's a lens. Changing our perspective during this season is so important. Focusing on the fact that God is in complete control at this moment, not worrying how the rest of this quarter is gonna go online or if graduation is coming for those of you who are seniors, but putting our faith in God that he has a plan for our life. We're in a season where plans are being disrupted and yet God wants to fulfill something better with us and he wants us to help. He wants to help strengthen our faith in him. So let's ask God for the perspective of heaven, which is in the Lord's prayer. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Ask God to help you fix your eyes on him so that we may run the race on his path. Good evening, PUC. Um, we're glad to be here and share a little bit about our experience here in Palau. My name is Antonio Robles. I go by Tony. Most of you probably, everyone except freshmen probably heard my name or met me. And I definitely do want to say that I miss PUC. I miss the back 40. I miss being with you guys, the biology department. I'm a biology major. And I've been here in Palau for eight months. And I do teach physics, chemistry, and I was also teaching health, um, two electives, marine biology, and also I was teaching film production. Uh, so right here I have my good friend, Joe. Um, he's from Southern. He's introduced himself a bit. All right. Yeah. So like you said, um, my name is Joe Mixon. Um, there might be a few of you who, who might have heard my name or might know me. Um, but yeah, I do um, hail from Tennessee. I graduated from Southern actually a couple of years ago. And since then, I started a master's in global community development, also from Southern. Um, my undergrad was in history and secondary education. Um, I'm supposed to be graduating with my master's this May, actually. So hopefully that still works out. Um, but really, my, my story is a little bit different because um, I was here in Palau five years ago as a student missionary my first time. Um, and now I'm back. Uh, and and I, I'm so blessed to have this opportunity to actually be a missionary again for for a longer term because I actually came back and signed a longer term contract for two years. Um, so this is the first of two. 
in which case I actually might stay even longer post that two year contract because I really feel like uh, this is where God has called me to be. Um, this is this is really kind of a calling. There's no other way to explain it. And so um, coming back here to Palau for a second time has been a huge blessing for me. Um, and finishing out my master's here has been tough, but but it's it's really all been God's leading in my life. And so, like I said before, I'm super blessed to be here in Palau and also be here with you guys. All right. So I just want to share a little bit of my experience beginning here in Palau. Actually, I'll sidetrack a little bit, go a little before that. Um, when I was growing up, I've always had this mentality that I'm going to plan everything in my life. Ever since I was 11, 12, I would read a lot of like personal growth books and I would have my goals and I'd be like, I'm going to reach these goals and I'm going to succeed. I'm going to have a lot of things in my life, a lot of material things, whether it's a new computer, a new camera, a lot of money. I had these thoughts ever since I was young and I was always striving to achieve those goals. I told myself that it was all in the mind. If I believed it, I could achieve it. So during my whole life, I had my whole life planned out. Five-year plans, 10-year plans, I had those already. And not once, really, even though I've always considered or always wanted to do some sort of mission, I never consider it as a possibility for one year, at least way ahead. Uh, maybe when I'm about to retire or whenever I'm retired, maybe I'll think about it. That's what I, I thought about when I was younger. Um, I never had in my own plan, in my personal plan, to go out for a year and let alone teach because that was definitely not what I was studying for. Even though I am studying biology, I was doing that because I, I do en I enjoy that subject and because I wanted to apply also to uh, medicine later in the future. So it was definitely something not planned and it's really awesome how God works. Um, the first time I really heard about missions was my freshman year of PUC. I saw the, the missionaries come back and share their stories and I kind of got it in my mind again. I was like, okay, this seems pretty cool, but I'm not going to do it. I've already done my fair bit of spiritual work or, or mission work, doing canvassing and other things as well. So I, I've done, I would tell myself, I've done enough. I'm good. My spiritual walk is well. I don't need to do anything else. One year is a lot of commitments and I just want to get done with my career uh, accomplish my goals, get all the money that I wanted since I was young, be able to do all these things, travel. Um, so it was just in my back of my mind, but it wasn't really something I wanted to do a reality. Um, I know Fabio, he would talk to me. He was like, hey, you're going to Fiji next year. Oh, you're doing this next year. Or, you, or when are you going as SM? And as a freshman, I was like, nah, uh, never. Like, I was just going to say whatever, but I'm, not, I'm never going to do it. I always had that in my mind. Um, and my sophomore year, same thing. I was, I had my goals. I knew what I was going to do every single year. Um, from there to like five years later, 10 years, I had everything planned out. But my junior year, I started to realize that life is very short and there's so much more that you could do. Like it's not going to matter in 50 years. It's not going to matter if I worked as a doctor for 30 years or 29 years. Like there's not much of a difference. So I started to think about those things. And not only that, but I was really struggling in classes and commitments it was a lot of work. I was really getting drowned with all the responsibilities that I had. Um, and it got to the point where I started to see how my mental health was being affected. And during that time, I, I decided to look into it more after the Missionary Vespers. Uh, they talked about it and it seemed really, really cool. Actually, I was able to particip participate in the Leone Medals in a leadership conference where it was all based on mission work. Mm -hmm. And that was really where it sparked first time um, missions or myself really committing a year to do that just because I was able to spend a weekend with missionaries and I would ask questions and they would tell me a lot of good things about their experience. And not only that, I was, I was there. Part of the reason why I was there is to um, help students understand how important mission work is. And we had a lot of projects. We had to make boxes to send out to each missionary, which is really cool because this year we all got those boxes from that same conference. Mm -hmm. And that was really cool to see and for me to experience being there as well. And when I noticed that the church does commit a lot of their time and their effort to really try to have these missionaries, I uh, really started, uh, started myself, I started to think more often about the possibility of going 
a year abroad. Um, and I'm sure it's similar for you, uh, Joe. Um, you had those moments where you got called to become a missionary. And just like, just like, just like that, um, I started to think and pray more about it. Um, and I talked to Fabio. He mentioned Palau. I did not, I have not heard of Palau ever in my life before that, actually. So when he heard it, I looked it up and it looked very beautiful. They have rock islands here, which are very, very beautiful. And I started to see pictures. I started to see how big it is, the culture. And I started to really like it. I have a friend um, that graduated already that was missionary here. So I got into contact with them, got in contact with another person that I knew that came to Palau. And soon I started to really love this place even without me being there. And I started to see myself in this place when five, like a year later, a year before, I hadn't even known about this place. A year before, I didn't even think about being a missionary. Um, and at that point, in a very difficult time actually in my life, I decided to apply and to become a missionary. And it was not easy. It was definitely not easy because I had my plans and I had to be humble with myself. I had to stop that pridefulness in my heart to listen to God and to really accept that calling. And I want to share a verse uh, to you guys. Uh, it's Deuteronomy um, 31, 6 and 8. And it says, Be strong and bold. Have no fear or dread of them, because it is the Lord your God who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Um, so now going uh, to my experience in Palau, the first couple of weeks were actually quite difficult and not really because um, of the weather or the culture or the environment. The environment here in Palau is very, they're very nice. They're the nicest people, people honestly, in, in the whole world or as Oh, like the nicest people I've met for sure. They're very helpful. The whole community is very supportive of the missionaries. The SDAs are very well known. Seven Day Adventists are very well known here in the community. And we're very respected. And that's something that's really awesome. But like I mentioned before, teaching was never really an option for me. My family, they're all teachers. My grandpa, he was actually a physics and chemistry professor or teacher. My mom's a music teacher. My three other, my two other aunts, they're English teachers. My grandma is an English teacher. So there's teachers all over. And I guess just for the fact that there's teachers in my family, I just didn't want to do the same thing. Um, so at first, it was definitely challenging to change that mindset of just focusing on medicine and to really start thinking about how I could be a good teacher. Um, and the first couple of weeks, for sure, it was definitely challenging. And that's something you guys will notice um, if you guys do take that call from God to serve. At the beginning, it might be hard and it might be challenging. Uh, but just know that the reason why you're there is much bigger than what you think. Like you will definitely find later on a big reason why God placed you in that spot, whether it's to reach others or even to reach yourself or to really grow as an individual. Um, so the first two weeks, like I mentioned, uh, it was, I wouldn't say it was very, very difficult to the point where it was um, like I was stressed about it or anything. It was just a whole different thing that I had never thought about. And then as soon as I kept working on it, as soon as I started growing uh, better relationships with my peers, with my colleagues, um, I started to see what they did. I started to implementing that as well. I started to really focus on my relationship with God or really focus on the purpose why I was there. Um, there was many reasons why I was there. One is just for spiritual healing, mental healing, for uh, many things that had happened personally in my life. Uh, so that was one of the reasons. Another reason was to uh, travel, to get to know a new culture, get to know a new group of friends. And another big reason why is because of the students, of course. Um, you want to, and that's one of the biggest reasons that as, as you progress from the year, you start to realize how much more important it is. And during that whole time, um, in the first two weeks, uh, two weeks, I started to really diminish those first couple of, like first couple of reasons why I was there. And I started to focus more on those students. And as soon as I did that, um, uh, everything got better. Everything that I was, the other reasons why I was there started to be solved by their own just by focusing on the real reason which was to spread God's love not only to uh, the community here but also spe specifically to those students that we have here 
Um, and they're really awesome. They're definitely super cool. I teach in a high school, so and it's the age difference is not as huge as if I was teaching elementary. Um, so it's really cool. Uh, we could spend time in office hours or in class. They make jokes. It's really fun. Time goes by very quick. Um, and it's something that we definitely enjoy. We grow those relationships with them. And I start to realize how important teaching is. Um, so just moving forward, just one uh, challenge recently is, of course, with coronavirus and everything. You guys might be wondering, like, if this thing go, goes on, maybe if I do have in my heart to be a missionary, maybe put, like maybe God is telling me not to do it. Or maybe God is telling me to wait longer because of this virus or whatever. And I just want to say that that's definitely not the case because as we read in the verse, God will be with you no matter what situation. And if you really have faith in God that he's going to take care of you in every moment, I definitely encourage you guys to... Even though right now it might be a difficult moment, I definitely encourage you guys to look into becoming a missionary next year. Um, so I know we have many challenges um, this this year or just as a person, as a missionary. There could be a lot of challenges, but at the same time, there's way more blessings and challenges, I feel. Uh, but what's one thing, Joe, that you would add to that? Um, just how, how could we thrive in these challenges? Yeah, I think um, I do have... A few points I'd like to give for you guys, um, since I am a little bit more experienced out here, you know, it's not my first rodeo, as some would say, and, um, and I have been through quite a lot um, in my life, not just with missions, but also with personal challenges and things that I've had to overcome mm-hmm. um, in my life. And, and I think that probably one thing that, that I would say that really, really helps a lot, especially here in Palau, is having a sense of community. Mm. Having that sense of community that you talked about before is extremely important. Right. Um, Palau is, is so amazing because of the hospi- hospitality and, and, and the way that the people just are so warm and welcoming um, just to anybody, and, and especially SMs who come. And the, there's, there's church members who even will, will adopt us as their, like part of their family for the year. Mm. Like Tony and I both have um, like Palawan parents, a Palawan mom that will actually take care of us and give us food and, and, and make sure that we're doing okay and, and uh, you know, see us at church and, and invite us to do stuff. And it's, it's really, really awesome to be able to have, have part in sort of a Palawan family here. Um, so that's part of like a sense of community that, that gives us belonging and, and a purpose here outside of the school. Um, because some of you guys might be thinking, well, what, what, am, what else am I there for if it's, if it's not just teaching? What else is there? Um, and I think that the community aspect is, is also important to, to understand that, that there's so much more mm-hmm. outside of the classroom, um, not just with the kids, but with everyone here. Um, and so that community aspect is important, but also the community aspect that we have with the, our fellow student missionaries, you know, like right, right. Tony and I, and I have become like brothers and we, there's other SMs that we had that who have since left and gone back to the States. But like we were super close together and, and it was an SM family that we had. Yeah, sure. um, and that happens every year, no matter what year. Um, if you guys are look, thinking about coming out next year, man, I'll be here. You guys should come. It's going to be great. You should. This and, guy's uh, great. <laughs> <laughs> and so like that community um, family aspect is, is super, super awesome to, to overcome any challenges that you might face. Now, one other thing I want to add to that is um, a sense of, of, you know, community that brings with it, um, you know, like, for example, if we are, if we're working on our spiritual life or, our, or even our, our physical health or mental health, any of those categories, um, like if, if we're trying to do specific number of hours reading the bible a week or if we're trying to you know do devotional talks with our kids and how do we do that or even if like we're talking about physical life you know working out staying healthy staying fit Mm -hmm. um there's there's a a sense of of you know belonging and purpose that comes with like the group that you're with too with that and i think in my personal walk in my life i've needed that push and that extra that extra spark to keep keep going um, it's hard for me to do it on my own. And I think um, that it's, it's so important to have other people around you who are also striving for the same goals 
that you might have, especially in your spiritual life and your spiritual walk. And so kind of sharing that journey in a way is, is super, super cool because, you know, you're, you never feel like you're alone. You never feel like you are doing this by yourself at all because there's other people walking and striving and, and working towards the same goals that you are. And, um, and I think that that is, is a huge part of what it's like here in Palau and also all around the world in missions with uh, the family and the community aspect that you might find anywhere else, mm-hmm. um, not just here in Palau. Right. And, um, and so that, that accountability factor is extremely important for me in my personal life to have other people who, who help me stay true to, to my goals and my beliefs and, and what I'm trying to do especially here in the mission field. Right, right. And it's definitely really awesome. Uh, the, like you were mentioning, the community, just everyone together, we become a family. And this is not going to end after this year. It goes on for the rest of your life. You have people that you always rely on. And like you mentioned, uh, there's people that are striving for the same thing. And that's something that's very, very important. And sometimes you might not have the best friends and, or sometimes um, you don't feel like your friends are helping you grow. Um, and that's definitely the case at all times in our, our life. In your life, you'll have at some point, um, some time where you won't think that your, your relationships are really helping you grow much. Uh, but something that I could say for sure is that here, the experience I've had here is that all these friends that I've grown or everyone I've, I've got, gotten to know, um, I could definitely know that Oh, it was for my own growth and it they would definitely help me out for my own growth moving forward as well. I could always rely on them, I'm sure. I could always message any of the guys and be like, hey, pray for me or hey, I'm struggling with this. Please pray for me. Um, I could, even if we don't see each other for many years, that's that memory or that experience that we had together is always going to be close to our hearts and we're always going to be able to get together and move on with our friendship and grow even further. Um, so that's something that's very, very special. And this is just not the case in Palau. There's many places in the world where you could serve. Um, you could serve in the islands here in Micronesia. You could go in the Amazon. You could go in South America, Peru. Um, you could go even Hawaii. You could be there, task force, or somewhere in the United States, Africa, Europe. It, there's so many options. And if you are getting a call from God, or if you, like myself, my freshman year, if I just thought about the idea for one second, that's already like that's already the Holy Spirit really just putting those ideas in your in your mind. And even if you have many plans, even if you're pre med, even if you want to be a missionary just so it could be good on your resume or application, um, it's still the first step. That that's definitely the first step already. Like at least you're thinking about it. Um, but I definitely do want to encourage you guys because it's life changing. I know everyone says it's life changing. Um, and I definitely, I, I feel like I could definitely grow a lot more as well. It's not going to be like life changing to the point where you've reached the maximum level of growth that you've had your whole life. Or this doesn't mean that you're going to reach this point And then after that, it's going to go downhill. This is just the next step. And then after that, you could always live as a missionary for your whole life, even in your church community. And even there at your home with your family members, you could be a missionary to them as well, your neighbors. Um, So mission life never ends. Um, But definitely having that first thought is very important to really consider, pray about, uh, talk to people that have done it before. Uh, You could definitely message me if you follow me on Instagram or on Facebook. You can find me. You can message me and I'll definitely answer all your questions. Um, And just to wrap this up, um, I do want to encourage you guys to look into missions. Palau definitely needs um, some more teachers and they could definitely use any of you guys. Um, And like like Joe said, he's staying next year, so he'll take good care of you guys. So you guys are in good hands. Uh, But definitely recommend you guys looking into it. If you guys want to learn more, you can message Abner Sanchez on Facebook or talk to Fabio. He'll be able to connect you guys. Um, for all you freshmen, even if you're a freshman, I, this is a perfect time. I kind of wish I went earlier in my college life. That way I could have this experience before my following years. Mm-hmm. Um, just because it really focus, you refocus your life and it gives you a real purpose why you're here on this world. Um, so I definitely encourage you thinking about it, praying about it. 
um, and looking out in the website, looking at the callings and see if anything seems to be a calling from God. Um, and just one last thing, we have actually started a podcast. And if you guys want to know more about challenges, how we've achieved to thrive during those challenges, especially dealing with Corona um, or any other thing about missions, we have the chance for you guys to ask questions. Uh, so if you guys want to tune in to that podcast that we started, it's called The Afternoon Toast. It's on Spotify and any other platform that you use. You can follow our Instagram, The Afternoon's Toast, um, and you can see there you have a link. And you can just really keep up with our mission life and how we're doing. And then we're definitely going to give some more uh, background or how you guys could become a missionary as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thank you guys for listen, listening today this Vespers. I appreciate all you and for you to t- tune in and want to really personally, I know this is all online, but you're personally wanting to make uh, a step forward in growing your spirituality and that's super, super awesome. Um, so hope to, get to, hope to see you guys next year. Uh, don't be afraid to say hi if you've never met me. Um, I definitely will be excited to meet all of you guys. I miss you guys. I hope you guys stay healthy, stay home, take all the precautions necessary. Um, hopefully this virus will be gone soon and you guys could come to Palau. Um, so God bless you guys all. We'll be praying for you guys all. Thank you guys so much. Peace out.